episode of speaking birds it's your boy speaks we're back the crew is back we're looking ahead the eagles are six and two john clayton john clayton what's up guys <laughs> how we doing good what's up good to be here yeah man it's good to be here felt like a long week right i feel like i feel like uh i feel like it's been forever it's been the same I amount agree. of time i agree been too long been too long. We should start rolling out daily pods. Could you imagine every day? Oh, man. Give, give the people what they want. You know, give the people what they want. Guys, the Eagles are six and two. How how are we? How are we feeling? Let's just do like a quick temperature test. How how are we feeling on that fact? I'm happy, man. The team's. I think the team's playing good. I'm super excited. I tell you what, the defense is a revelation this year. I was not expecting the defense. I mean, here we are. You know, just at the halfway point here and it's the defense that is the biggest surprise to me pleasantly yeah i want to like i was thinking about this the other day like uh one of the one of the podcasts we we did i don't know i think it was maybe during we were you know losing that game we weren't looking too sharp and i, I had the analogy okay i want to bust out another analogy a recycled analogy if you will about the sports car you know it was like it's like, you know, we, we're always we're always on the cusp of being able to take this thing out and really revving the engine and taking it around town. I got to say, I think we're at that point. I mean, I think this is like, let's have fun where we got productivity. The vibes are great in the, you know, they were uh, they were interviewing Coop, Cooper Sharp, you know, so I forget who it was maybe maybe Chauncey was, you know, kind of messing with him and like the vibes are there. I think we're finally able to take this thing out. And uh, rev the engine. I think it's it's an exciting time. This isn't a fake. This isn't some fake six and two. I think we're 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 really uh, on our way. I'll yeah, just say that it's time to peruse town, if you will. Peruse town. What kind of sports car do you think this is? Huh? Lamborghini, Lamborghini, she- Chevy Corvette, the uh, Rivian, <laughs> Rivian. <I> can't, <laughs> can't even hear it creeping up behind you. That's. How, I mean, I feel like that's how it's going though. Yeah, yeah, that's actually great. Yeah, Rivian can't hear it. Guys, have it, any thoughts on uh, like anything from the week? Anything you saw maybe on a rewatch or anything of that nature? Uh, I'm gonna defer to Clayton because I didn't really get a chance to rewatch. I've just been busy. Yeah, uh, I mean, going back and rewatching it, I didn't get. A ch- I've been busy this week too. It was one of the first games I didn't really get to dive in on the all twenty twos, but I did rewatch it a couple times. Uh, the broadcast. And, uh, man, again, just going back to the defense, Zach Bond had himself a day. Uh, oh, yeah. Kobe Dean had himself a day in coverage at that. Like, it wasn't just that pick that he had at the end to seal the game. Like, he had good coverage uh, on Ingram, quite a few plays there. Uh, and a guy that didn't really get many flowers, and he he didn't dominate the stat column, but he had one of the, the best games he's had of the, the year, and that's Jalen Carter. I mean, and not only did he have a great game, he did it. He only came out for two snaps, which is ungodly for a defensive tackle to do that. Like that's like Fletch never even did that shit. Fletch would be in the high nineties, but never like, I think he was like 98, 99% of the snaps, something crazy like 96. that. Ninety-six point three. Yeah. It was Carter something had. crazy. So, and he was just a, a wrecking crew out there, man. I mean, they, they had to double team him and he was beating double teams just relentless. Uh, so yeah, that was, uh, that was encouraging to see. It, it reminded me of the saints game only without, you know, him actually getting to the, the passer, which he had a couple of times. There was one that comes to mind, uh, in the second quarter, I think at the end of the second quarter, he is getting ready to just blindside Trevor Lawrence had him from behind. And he is like moving a fucking freight train and his own guy falls in front of him and takes him out to the point where I thought Carter was going to come up hurt, but he just came up pissed. Uh, so that that was great to see. Um, 
you know, obviously some of the Nick decisions uh, that were talked about all week. I've kind of cooled down on that. Um, just yeah, just to, you know, because I there is a reporter. I you've probably heard of him, John uh, McMullen. They call him Johnny he, Mac. Yeah, uh, yeah. He's been around forever. He's covered this team forever. He's really respected. Um, he has you know people that he talks to on the inside at the Novacare Complex, and he kind of put some perspective on it. Um, he's he's basically saying like the brain trust inside of the Novacare Complex loves what Nick did on Sunday. Like they're actually dumbfounded that the fans and stuff are freaking out about it. Like they think it's funny. Like there, the, he said this one thing, uh, and I'm, I'm paraphrasing. Where you know, I don't know if you guys seen Dan Orlovsky say that uh, if Nicobe Dean doesn't pick that ball, Nick Sirianni's fired on Tuesday. That and, was a way over. That's that's, yeah, that's a way a huge, overreaction. Yeah, that's on, a huge yeah. overreaction. But uh, and this guy said so. He's he started laughing, you know, making fun of that take, and he was like, to be honest, he would have had a better chance of getting fired had he not uh, ran with the analytics and not been aggressive. Then he would have then you know what the outcome there and that's just the mindset like that's the way that they have a data science team that's right in charge of this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they hire people to do this now and that's yeah. like that's the philosophy since 2017 we got that uh super bowl ring with uh doug you know being ballsy doug and doing all that and that's that turned the mindset of this franchise to they want to be ultra aggressive. They want to be, you know, out on the cutting edge. And if you look at it, the Eagles are, they're the ones that kind of set this aggressiveness trend on track here because people weren't going for it at the clip that we were going for it. And then people started right. seeing us doing it and being successful at it and being like, Oh shit. Then why aren't we doing that? Yeah. You know? And it's funny because like, it's like the, that Madden player, you ever play somebody online and the son of a bitch never punts. Does not matter? <laughs> And he then, always yeah, goes yeah, yeah. for it and then it somehow gets it. It's like, yeah. damn, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the I, mindset inside the, the Novacare complex, and that comes straight from the owner. So Nick's just towing the line right there. And, you know, honestly, looking at some of the decisions, there were a few that I was like, what the hell, dude? But then going back and looking at them, you know, with a clear head, it's like some of them I get it, man. Some of them I get yeah. it. I can't kill them for it. Yeah, I, I, I was, I was super critical. Uh, I'll say that. Um, yeah, I think, I, I think my main point, uh, with it all was just like, I don't know, be smart about it. It seemed like, I, I don't know. I mean, going for the two points. Sure. I get that there. It's like what 80% conversion percentage. Like, okay, I get it. Go for that. That's 80%. You don't, you know, if you're a gambler, you're taking those odds every, every time. Uh, but yeah, like the the fourth down play with like the rollout with Jalen Hurts, like that's the stuff that I'm like still frustrated on, and I feel like like maybe call a gadgety play for the two point conversion, and then you have I don't know I feel like they were soured on the the tush push not working, they got scared, they got in their heads, and then fourth and one were kind of like rolling out with Jalen on a play that just didn't formulate, didn't work. Yeah, so I think I don't know my argument. I think I'll hold firm a little bit, but maybe I shouldn't be too. Uh, I don't know, too knee jerky. I'll, I'll 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 admit to that. I agree. I actually agree with you, Alex. There, like um, in that position, I think they should have still went with the tush push, considering a lot of those uh, two point conversion push pushes they did are a little bit over a yard. You know what I mean? But that, right. uh, that fourth down there was like odd under a yard. You know what I mean? He's I, yeah. I clearly, think Hertz is going to get that. You know what I mean? In fact, the one tush push I feel like he got that they uh at, at the at the goal line there that they said no on you know that was reviewed but yeah i kind of agree with your take there well let me just run through it real quick so 450 left uh first quarter balls on the 22 it's fourth and three that's the one where he goes to uh aj it's a bad throw like if we execute that not only is it a conversion aj might take that to the house so i can't fold him on that one like that was that was an execution issue like i get it yeah um let me see the next one 22 seconds left second quarter it's uh the pa temp now this one is is the weird one to me so this is the one where we kicked the point after they had jumped off sides nick decides to take the point off the board and go for two now at this point it's 16 nothing if you take the point off or i'm sorry it's 17 nothing if you take the point off it's 16 nothing 18 and 17 in that situation or it, they're basically the same thing. You know what I'm saying? 16 is yeah. a huge deal. 16 is a two point, uh, two point, two point yeah, possession. Two, 
Whereas yeah, 17 and above is a three point, you know, or a three uh, possession game. So, like, I don't understand the decision on that one. Even if, you know, like they were saying, it's 90% conversion rate coming in for the tush push. And, like, I don't I don't know. I That, that one to me, I'll, I'll, I'll say that was a bad decision in my opinion. I'm glad you brought um, that up. Yeah, because it, there's situational stuff as well, which which I didn't it, I didn't even bring up. But yeah, the 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 points and stuff. I mean, analytics all you want, but I, I mean, it's being smart. Like you want to common sense. Yeah, yeah, common, and, common like sense. Keep it a three score game. And to, to be fair, and you know, I ripped them last week, and I'm gonna rip them a little bit again this week. The officiating was absolutely horrible. That was a that was converted. That was a that was the one that Jalen right. actually got in on. So I mean, we actually converted that, and the ref screwed us on it. But either way, uh, leave the points on the board and just you know take it on the kickoff or whatever. I, you don't need to to go for two there. That the extra point there doesn't really make a difference. You know that seventeen and eighteen. I don't know. It was just kind of weird to me. But you know whatever. He actually converted it, and they blew it. And then the next one, 925, third quarter, Jalen rushes in for the touchdown. Uh, that's where Big Fred Johnson got hurt. Uh, he got clipped or uh, submarined. And they end up going for two. At this point, it's 22 nothing. So here's another one. Like, if you get the two points here, it makes it a 24 nothing game. They have to score three touchdowns with two com- point conversions on every single one. So you basically, you almost put the game out of reach if you convert this. Right. I'm not going to kill him for it. Um, you know, 23 and 22 are basically the same. 24 would have been the desired uh, result there. So I understand why they would go for that. Like, I get it. I, I, again, I, I'm not a huge fan of these freaking two-point conversions for no reason. But this one I thought was actually, I mean, I, I get the logic behind it. It makes it a three touchdown with, and you have to score a two-point conversion with everyone just to tie it. So I get it. And then yeah. that's in between there. That's when that freaking fumble happens and the game completely turns on its head. So all momentum switches. It goes from 22 nothing to 16 to 22. So 125 left, third quarter, balls on the Jags 24. It's fourth and inches. Now, this is a weird one to me. Like three points makes it a nine point game. You know, you can kick right. the field goal right there and you're up nine. So they, they have to, it's a two point or it's a two possession game. So, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I can't defend that one. I get, I get the uh, the tush push conversion rate, and that's what they're thinking. You know that this play is ninety percent. You know it's going to work. It hasn't been working today, but the odds are that it will. Like it's that's what analytics is. It's it's the you know it's not a micro. It's the whole thing. You know. Yeah. So I I get the thinking behind it there. But then you then it's the play call that that's just what, what are we doing here? That was the one where it was like a, a fake. Hand, we lined up for the tush push or in the formation. And then it was a fake handoff. Jack Stoll's kind of open, but Jalen's just like scrambling around and then he gets sacked like the play call that we got cute on it. If you're going to yeah. get cute on that, just like right there, either tush push it or kick the fucking three points. Don't get cute. Yeah. That's not the time to get cute. That's where I have the problem. The main problem with that. If you're going to run the tush push, do it. You know, it's inches, whatever. It's very short, whatever. Go ahead. Don't get cute with it. And again, yeah. that was a bad. That was a bad spot on the. So I'm just gonna keep uh, harping on the refs. That was a bad spot, and that was a terrible uh, play call. And then, uh, so we score again, 28-16. Uh, he goes for the two point conversion. Now this one makes absolutely no sense that the fans were killing him for it. Like, and I, I heard people killing him and seen people killing him, you know, throughout the week on this one. It's like, dude, it's 28, 16. If he goes for two, that's two touchdowns. That's a 14 point, you know, you, yeah. 29 is nothing. 13 points is, is nothing compared to 14. Points. So right. people killing him for that one. That's a no brainer. And then the final one, this one I leave up to, you know, I guess dealer's choice. I mean, we go for the 50 start, 57 yard field goal attempt. Elliot has made these before, but he hasn't this year. So that should be taken into account. He was 0 for 3 from 50 and out from coming into the game. Now he's 0 for 4. And you keep the guy dry the entire game by not letting him even kick the uh, extra points and then trot him out there for a 57 yarder. Yeah. I mean, he had that one 40 something uh, yeah. yarder earlier. So, I mean, he did have one kick, but yeah, you're not kicking field or you're not kicking extra points at all. But I mean, regardless, it, 
some people were freaking out saying that he should have went for it. And it's like, look, I don't think he should have went for it in that. It's fourth and three, fourth and three or fourth and four, something like that. I think you either punt the ball or you, or you try the field goal there. That's where I landed on that. And people were killing him, you know, and I guess he was damned either way. Because if he goes for the, uh, if he goes for the, the field goal and misses it, as we've seen, he's killed. If he punts it right there, everybody's going to call him a coward saying, you know, you're aggressive all game. And then you count, you, you know, puss out at the right, end, right. you go for it on fourth and three and you don't make it. You're going to be killed. So nothing, no decision was correct right there for Sirianni. So he was going to get killed no matter what yeah. after the way that game went. So whatever dealer's choice on that right. one there, that was a no win situation for Nick as a coach. Like he was going to get killed either way. Right. So, I mean, looking at it, you know, not with my emotions in check, I'm not going to be as pissed off as I was about it. And I'm not going to sit here and say like a lot of these content creators and media talking heads out there are saying Nick Sirianni is going to cost us our playoff life. Like, well, that's a question he- I wanted to ask you. I wanted to ask uh, you guys like, okay, so yeah, a lot's been made of, of, Hey, we're not, we're not a team that can go deep now because we have Sirianni. He's holding us back the Sirianni, blah, blah, blah. Do you think, uh, say a game that he coached last week, um, you know, it's been kind of analyzed. We just talked about it late, late down the stretch, December, January. Do you think that kind of game, those decisions cost us a game or do you want to see him sticking firm? Essentially, would you like to see that game in January? Or is this something that needs cleaned up? I want him to stick true to what he is and what his philosophy is. Okay. It's when you start double. Deviating. Yeah. When you start double clutching, you start hesitating, you start second guessing yourself. That's when you're going to start running into problems because you're, Mm -hmm. it's not, it's not organic. He needs to be him. Nick, be you, do you, whatever you think's correct, do it. If it, if you know, we have the, the ability to sit back and, and judge the result. We don't judge the decision because we see the result and that's, you're already corrupted right there. Right. So, yeah. So it's hard to to keep the result from the decision separate. And that's one thing that we, we got to make sure that we're doing, like keep, (laughs) try to understand the decision first before you, you know, look at the outcome because the outcome, there's many things that go into that. The decision could be correct and the outcome could be wrong. Well, like I said, like, uh, you know, if, if everything goes right, if, 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 if the ball bounces our way on all of those, we're praising Sirianni to no end. Oh, this guy's a ballsy coach. He's going to win. A, you know what I mean? Exactly. And that's, thank you. Cause that's the point that I wanted to, to make as well. If all of these decisions go the other way, there is not a conversation. In fact, I don't even know that people praise him. Nick only gets <laughs> killed when shit goes the wrong way. Right, like he, right. like he's the lightning rod. So if anything bad happens, whether it's his fault or not, whether it's players executing, you know, or decisions made, it doesn't matter. Like Nick gets the brunt of it. For sure. A lot of times I feel like it's maybe not 100% his fault, but I get it because he's the head coach. Everything that goes on on that field, he's responsible for. But I think people put too much pressure on Nick like when things go wrong because it's not Nick's fault when we're killing people. It's Nick's fault when weird shit's going wrong. And I, that's unfair. Yeah. Like you can't, and this was the, my worry with bringing Nick back this year. I, I knew this was going to be the case. Like, even if the team did well, anytime one little thing went wrong, it was going to be blown up and people were going to be coming for Nick with pitchforks and torches, man. Right. And that's, it's what it's been all year now. And I'm not going to sit here and say that Nick is infallible because he's not, he does make mistakes, but I look at the body of work, man. And he has a pretty solid body of work. I mean, the guy is what, 41 and 19? Yeah. Super Bowl appearance, playoffs every year. Playoffs every year, multiple playoff wins. Like, shaves his head. (laughs) Many men. I mean, it's just (laughs) 50 cents. Second highest win percentage. Yeah. And of active coaches. So I don't know. I think we're a little overcritical sometimes of Nick. Uh, when things go bad, in my opinion, Nick, just do you, man. Just uh, stick to the philosophy that you have. Don't start second guessing yourself now because that's where we're going to get into trouble. Come December and January is if he starts second guessing himself and 
stops doing the shit that got us to where we're at. You know what? Even through it all yesterday or Sunday, we won. So, oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it, it's not always going to go the way that you want it to go, but a win is a win and we move on. Like, that's the 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 math or the the probability you know it'll even out that was just yeah. one of those games where nothing went right yeah and let me tell you about sports cars all right and i'm like rain man no but here like <laughs> uh, here's here, here here's what here's okay just to, like tie it back in just because it's on my mind i want we're at the point of the season nothing's changing guys all the modifications are done this is it. We're not firing Sirianni. Even if this thing crashes and burns, we don't win another game. I think we see Sirianni through. You know, Jalen, we're seeing what we have is what we have. There's no modifications on the car. This is it, guys. Pressure's off. Let's spin this thing. Like, that's where I'm at. Like, there's no, are we getting rid of Sirianni? Like, stop talking about it. We're not doing it. He's here. He's our guy. We're going to ride with him. You know, it's, we're going to succeed or die with him. Ride or die. You know what I mean? There's no adjustments going to be made. 100%. Yeah. And I mean, that, you know, can uh, <laughs> take us into the trade deadline. We didn't make any moves because we felt like yep. we were good. Like, we're good to go. Nick or uh, Nick said that, you know, he felt good about his offense. And Vic said he felt good about the defense. So uh, people were killing Howie for not making a move. It's like, what move did you want him to make? I mean, Zadarius uh, Smith? Yeah, yeah. That could have helped. But again, it takes two sides to make a deal. So who the hell knows Yeah, what actually went down there? You know, it, I I find it hard to believe that Howie didn't at least inquire about it. You know, so something oh, happened that yeah. we didn't get him. Or maybe Vic looked at it and was like, look, man, I don't want this guy. You know, I don't we don't need him. Well, he's only True. got he's only got two point five sacks and like <laughs> 10 tackles, I think. And it, most of them are assists. So. So, I mean, it's, I don't know. I, I That's another one. People, you know, killing uh, Howie for not making a move. It's like, dude, this is the first year that I look at it, at this team, at a Philadelphia Eagles team, and I'm like, I really don't see any holes. I mean, obviously, if you can get a an elite edge rusher, it doesn't matter what year. I'll take that. Like, that's a generational talent. You right, know, Crosby right. and, and Garrett. You're going you're gonna to sign up for that. It doesn't matter what your roster looks like any year. Um, if you can get those two players, but other than that, man, I mean, we're solid top to bottom. And not only that, the chemistry is so good. Like you said, yeah. at the top here, man, we are vibing together. The yep. chemistry Definitely. is so good with this team right now. feels good, man. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, and just to touch on the trade deadline, man, I would have loved to have been a fly on those walls. Cause you know, that's a lot of coach speak too. You know, we're good. We like the players we have here. You gotta mm. say that, but you know, behind the scenes, how he is going crazy. Just that's his job, though, right? He's trying to get something done, I, you know. And yeah, sure, Crosby, Garrett, but they probably wanted astronomical. You know, they probably were asking an astronomical price. Maybe we don't even know if they would have even traded him. But you know, everything has a price, and I think that price would have been too much. And yeah, like you said, we're stacked. I mean, I don't know, but I yeah, I would have loved to just like heard the conversations or just witnessed it, uh, just behind the scenes. Yeah, guys. I feel good about it. I do. And I got to say, I got to say, like, looking at the game last week, man, Coop, Cooper, Cooper, Cooper DeJohn, he might, dude, he might be one of my favorite Eagles. I mean, obviously we're like loaded hmm. with like who could be your favorite, but man, if he, if he stays on his track, he's going to be a fan favorite. If he's not already, they're already, they're already doing the Coops mm -hmm. in the stadium. Like he's going to be a fan favorite. And I'll tell you what, he, uh, he, uh, he's easy. He's easily on track to be my favorite. Um, that guy's a beast. I, I gotta yeah. say, man, I, I when I looked at him, I thought he was small. I know you mentioned that he was big. I was like, man, I don't know if he's got like the frame or whatever. I, man, I'm I was never more happy to be wrong in my life. <laughs> the, the kid's a stud. He is, kid is and a stud. I, uh, I I seen something this week. Uh, I wonder if if they made a concerted effort to do this. He was calling uh fair catches on a lot of stuff. I I wonder if they're telling him, look, man, unless it's wide open, just fair catch it. Because there was stuff yeah. that I feel like last week he was fair catching that the week before he would have he would have taken off with. I don't Which, know. I think, go ahead. I think, so, I think some of those uh, were easily fair catch punts. Well, a I, lot of them were down in the in the you know our red zone. 
Or, yeah, inside the 10. That's another thing Like with him. There was one that I'm glad he did catch because the coverage got behind him. But some of those inside the 10 there, man, he should just let go so we're not, you know, starting inside the 10. Let that shit go right through the end zone. For sure. Yeah. Well, did, what, how did Covey get injured? Was he, was he, was it a punt, punt return? Was it, no, was it, it was a... on a pass play. Ah, uh, okay. Hmm. I wonder when he'll be back. Uh, actually, he was practicing last week. Yeah. Uh, oh, that was the thing okay. I wanted to say and I forgot. Yeah. I, I was going to say they said that, uh, they, Covey was out there. They said, uh, they thought about six weeks. So it should be maybe next week he might be back. Though, yeah. You know what? They'll, now you say that they'll probably bring him back after the mini buy here, after the Washington game. That would make sense. I did want to say yeah. uh, last week we had talked about uh, uh, possibly playing Steen over Beckton. However, through the game, uh, Beckton uh, graded out as the highest O lineman last week with a ninety four point nine PFF grade. Yeah, yeah, I saw that. It was good to see, and that's dude, that's great. That's a good problem to have right there. You know. Uh, so I have no problem with that. And depending on, you know, what happens with big Fred here, uh, yeah. uh there were reports today that, um, uh, Becton was taken left snaps, uh, tackle yep. snaps. So, yeah. and Steen was Steen in there, in you know, at right guard. So who knows? Um, but it's, it's a good problem to have. Like you have two legit starting guards, you know, in Becton and Steen. Man, Fred Johnson allowed two sacks and five pressures on 37 pass blocks last week. Yeah, also, uh, Zach Bond and Nakobe Dean were through week eight and nine were the highest graded linebackers. Uh, Zach Bond was a 93.3, and Nakobe Dean was a 92.8. And then while we're on Zach Bond, he's uh, ranked 11th overall with 79 overall attack. Man, that's a, it's just, it's all coming together. And I don't want to be, I do want to, so I do want to say this only because, uh, Clayton just, kept going um and i wanted to throw it in there quick but um jalen carter's highest or that 96.3 was the highest uh percentage for a eagles defensive tackle since 2012 mm. who's the was it fletch um i did not see it didn't say i actually i don't think you'd almost have to think have right? to look it up yeah yeah, yeah jalen and what did, didn't they say that he played like Man, maybe I missed. Her. I was doing something when I was listening. He played like all the snaps. No, fifty two like, of fifty four. Yeah, like that's and for a guy that everyone's on his conditioning and and rightfully so. But man, to go out there and and to play all but two snaps. I mean, I I think it it's even I was critical. Hey, are you going to be you know your, your work ethic? But it looks like he's putting in the work. So hey, wrong yeah. again. As long as I'm wrong at like this, I, I'm okay being wrong every time. Every yeah, time. The most incredible thing about that was, uh, like I said, when I went back and watched it, the, one of the watch throughs, I was watching him specifically on the defense. It, it didn't look like he was out there, you know, like his, his level of play never dipped, like his motor never, you know, lowered. He was as wreck, <laughs> was wrecking shop the same in the first quarter as he was in the fourth quarter. It, it was impressive. And I love that. If you, yeah, I was going to he... say, if you guys go back and watch that again, watch, watch carter man like i said he didn't blow up the stat column but man that guy was impactful out there he was uh talking to brian baldinger and before the game they were maybe talking technique or something but it, when i looked at him he looked like he slimmed down a little bit maybe that's just me mm. throwing something out there that i don't know what i'm talking about but i'm he, sure he definitely looked a little it, slimmer yeah which yeah. probably makes sense for him being able to play that many snaps you know yeah yeah yeah, good for him. He got his conditioning right. Looking at you, Jordan Davis. No, I'm joking. Jordan Davis is fine. It's a joke. But uh, man, there's there's a move, uh, Clayton. You know that as a as a football player, man. You see Carter. He just like he goes one way. Like he'll be he'll be like rushing. He'll be he'll be taking the uh, offensive lineman one way and just jerk him, just like mm. full, just imposing his will and just change directions and completely like throw the O lineman off. It's insane. The guy's a beast. Absolutely. He has violent hands. That guy has violent hands. And that's exactly, you know, what you just described right there. The stuff he does with his hands at the line. Whew. He's he's like, think of like Smitty's technical abilities as a route runner. That's his, that's Carter with his handwork at the line, man. The guy is good. He doesn't let these linemen get in. And that's why he can beat uh, 
double teams like he does, and that's why he's so good at taking them on because he doesn't let these guys get on his body, man. He gets he gets their freaking hands off him, and he's so quick and powerful. It's it's a hell of a combination. Uh, I was hoping that he would break out a little bit more than he has this season, but I'm telling you, this guy is going to be he's going to be Aaron Donald level for us Ooh. moving forward. I'm ta- I'm, I'm calling it. it. It may not be it may not be here in year two, but I'm telling you. Year three, look the fuck out. Year four, look out. This guy is coming. And they already know. Like, people already know. Like, he's not, this isn't no secret either. People already know. I mean, you've seen Saquon Barkley. I don't know if you guys seen uh, Saquon Barkley talking to him before the uh, Saints game. He was like, you that motherfucker, man. I played against you. Trust me. These boys are scared of you. Oh, like, yeah. He, he knows. Everyone knows. So, yeah. I got I got something for you on this last game, Clayton, that you're going to like. It's one of two things. Uh, Sidney Brown's special teams takeaway was the first special team takeaway in five years since Duke Riley recovered a muff kickoff. Oh, my God. And then uh, he's the first Eagle safety with three takeaways in his first 17 games since your favorite player of all time, Nate Allen. Oh, my boy. 2010 and 2011. I can't believe <laughs> Nate Allen did that, man. Freaking Nate <laughs> Allen. Get out of here. God. But no, man, I love it. Typically for you. Uh, oh, Alex, shout out to you. Uh, I'm with you 100%. Rewatching that, that Avante Maddox call was bullshit, man. Oh, that was, yeah, that, yeah. I, I rewatched think that. that was pass I... interference, man. I think the Rodgers on first down, that Rodgers breakup was way worse. Yeah, maybe make And then they call. throw it on that one, and I'm like, what? Like you're not gonna you're gonna not throw it on that Rogers one where he he mugged the dude, smacked yeah. him before the ball even got there, and you're gonna you know because he was a little bit handsy. I mean, if you're going to the letter of the law, you can throw the flag there, but I don't. I, honestly, that's ticky tacky, and that was I think that was a makeup call. Yeah, I think well, there was, was there were, go ahead, John. I just think it was um, called because he was holding on just a little bit late there as the ball was getting there. You know what I mean? Yeah, and then, like I said, if you're going to the letter of the law, that that's a legit flag. But man, to to throw that one and not throw that that one on first down, it's just like, dude, you can't pick and choose here, guys. Like, come on, call and again that whatever. I'm gonna look up. I should have looked them up before we started this, so I could roast them their <laughs> first and last names on the pod here. But I'm gonna look up that officiating crew. I want to know who they were, and I guarantee you they're not making it to. They're not going to be a playoff officiating crew. That's one of the worst officiating crews I've seen in years. And the, the review, the review officials, terrible man, terrible. Oh, I could yeah. I could let's... do that job from my couch better. Yeah, what's with this whole "let's go to New York" thing? I've seen that like a lot of people comment on this. What what is this? New York's just this like phantom entity that can swing games, like. Yeah, so you know they have I mean? a command center now set up in New York. So instead, I don't know if you remember, you know, back in the day, they, they'd have the little monitor and the ref would be over there, you know, looking into the monitor, reviewing it himself. Now that's taken out of the ref, the on-field ref's hands. That shit goes to a uh, command center in New York and they do it. Sometimes it'll just be like an automatic initiated one uh, that started this year. So the, the, or the coach won't even have to throw the flag. The, if it's something's close, New York will just automatically review it, and then if they can get the call back down before the play starts, the play's reversed, which has happened a few times in games uh, that we've seen the Eagles. Yeah, but, but yeah, that's where the New York thing is. It's taken out of the hands of the uh, officials on the sidelines, and now it's designated, dedicated official review officials, and they suck. Well, I, I couldn't find the uh, referee crew. I think they tried to scrub it. Uh, just <laughs> yeah, but but the head referee on that game was uh Alan Eck. So Alan Eck, you're you're the leader of your team. You're get you're getting the flame, Alan Eck. You're trash, bro. Pod. You're it's trash. A- Come on the pod. Angel Hernandez. <laughs> yeah. Angel. Defend yourself, Alan Eck. I'm gonna look you up. Where do you live? Okay, getting a little too far. <laughs> let's let's talk some. All right. Yeah, we're getting crazy. Yeah. I We're got his crazy. phone number. I got his phone number, guys. It's two one five. Let him know what you think about the show. Okay, uh, man, let's. Uh, what do you guys got? Anything else from the week? Any extracurriculars? Any? Uh... Yeah, I got. I got one more. Yeah, well, yeah. Throw it out there. Little Jalen Hurts uh, statsies. Uh, so per Jeff Kerr, Jalen is the first player in NFL history to rush for a touchdown, throw for a touchdown, and have a passer rating of one fifteen or higher in three consecutive games 
Uh, and then also he tied uh, three other players over the last four weeks with a 70% complete ratio, uh, 12 touchdowns or more, and that's passing or rushing, and zero turnovers. Uh, he tied Tom Brady, Drew Brees, Aaron Rodgers. The only other three people to ever do that in the history of the NFL over a four game company. span. So that's uh, yeah, it's a good company to be in. So I mean, I think we should really, uh, really give Jalen his praise, man. Give him his flowers. The dude's been balling yeah. out. He's been taking care of the ball, and it's not only just with his arm, man. Like it, some of these timely runs and tough runs too to keep drives going. To you know to really be that dagger in the heart of the defense. He's been doing all that stuff and he's been doing it well. And I feel like nobody, nobody really gives him his flowers. I, I mean, they've kind of calmed down now that he hasn't been turning it over, but there for a, the beginning of the season, he was like a, a punching bag, man. Everybody was killing him. Now he's in the talks. I seen a, a Fox uh, media, whatever. I don't even, I think it's, but they, I don't know if it's official for their MVP voting, but they had uh, Lamar, uh patrick and jalen and i forget who the other like the josh allen was the fourth guy so that's the mvp the top four mvps right now okay so that's i mean he's to... in the mvp talk again i got some every year to this, go ahead, go ahead. uh on test 10 plus yard throws through the four game win streak jalen is 20 of 29 500 passing yards five tds no interception uh yeah, that's wait of 20 plus 20 yards? plus yards you said 10 plus yards. Oh, 10 plus. Okay. Throws, throws. Um, leads the NFL with seven TDs of 20 plus yards. Fifth m most highest total TDs in the league and has gone five straight games without throwing an interception. Nick mm -hmm. Foles is the only other Eagle QB to not throw a pick in five consecutive games since the 1970 merger. Damn. Yes. It had to be that year he went 27 and two, right? Yeah. Yeah. It didn't say year, but. But yeah, it's a, you'd almost have to. It, it almost has to be. Yeah. Wow, man, he's uh, he's quietly having a great year, and I feel like nobody's talking about him out there, which is fine. I don't. I don't. It's as long Rivian, as you're dude. not, it's a Rivian. Yeah, it's a Rivian. I was gonna say. <laughs> dude, as long as as long as they're not killing him, that's all I care about. Like, I don't yeah. need you to praise him. But when you're when you're lumping, you know, undue criticism on the man, that's where I start to take offense. Yeah, I mean, what more do you want? He bought in. The, there was something going on, and I, we're not here to dig up the past and speculate. But I think there was something going on. He had, he was, I don't know. Maybe he wasn't vibing with Nick. Whatever, <laughs> he wasn't bought in. But after that bye week, he bought in, which shows that he's the maturity. Okay, let's go win games, and that's what they've done. You're one hundred percent right. After that, after the bye, he he's a different. Even at the podium, he's like a different guy. Like pre bye, he wouldn't say shit nice about Nick. Post bye, man, he's going out of his way to pick Nick up. Say what a good job Nick's doing. Yeah. Uh, not only that, the Eagles' offensive rankings show that. Mm. Yeah, they've moved up drastically. They're six. They're the sixth offense in the NFL. Uh, they're With the what? Eagles are the only team in the NFL to rank at top six or above in offense and defense. God, We're the only team in the NFL to be top ranked or top six or above in offense and defense. We're number three in defense. Top three defense. Oh, not even the Lions. I figured the Lions would be up there because they're having. Actually, I don't know how the Lions' defense is. I just know their offense is really good. Man, think, man, think about. All right, let's think about this. We got we got two division games in five days. Which come on, schedulers. But uh, man, we could we could be sitting here. Let's see. It says five. Maybe we could be sitting here in eight days, having beaten the the Cowboys, the Commanders, and be sitting so pretty. I mean, how would that feel? Feel great. I'm loving it. I'm it's loving it. it's what has to happen. I mean, yeah. If we if we want to win this division, we have to win these next two games. Honestly, these next four games, like, go back to the sports car. Uh, we're gonna be putting oh, it on yeah. the track. Like this is yeah. these next four games is going to be like the qualifying. So oh, we're yeah. going to be putting her out there and we're, <laughs> we're going to see what this sports car is made of, because this is, this is the stretch of the uh, schedule. That's going to test us the most. It gets easier after the Baltimore game, but these next four are tough, man. You got to go down to Dallas, even though they're shitty. We haven't won there since 17. 
and it's a yep. division rival that we hate and they hate us. We don't do well in that building. So it's not a give me. And the fact that they're so shitty and we're playing a backup quarterback and, you know, we have a Thursday night game against, you know, that actually means something for the division. Could be a trap game, you know? Yeah. If you, but hopefully you'd figure that they'd be able to get up for a division rival. But I, I don't know. So there's that possibility. And then, you know, right after that, you got a quick turnaround. You're at home at least. You got, you know, the division leader coming to town in Washington. After that, you have, you know, mini buy, but then you're flying out to LA to take on the Rams, which are surging right now. And then you got a tough Baltimore team in Baltimore. So these next four games, this next month here, this block is going to really tell us where we're at. That's why I told you, you know, because December 1st, I believe, is when uh, that Baltimore game is. Baltimore, yeah. After December 1st, we're going to know where we really are as a team. You want to know if you're a Super Bowl contender. You want to know, you know, what your chances of making the playoffs are. You'll know after December 1st because the rest of the – I don't want to say anything's a cakewalk, but the rest of the schedule is is pretty simple. I mean, you got you should, a, yeah. I would say you're gonna you're gonna have uh by the time we get there, the Giants are gonna be buried. Uh, you'd think the Cowboys are gonna be buried, so we play those two again. You got a Panthers team that's just you know struggling to tread stay water. In the NFL. Stay in the yeah. stay in the league. You got the uh, NFC North though that could take some wild card spots. Yeah, that's the problem. We that's need the them one. to start beating the each other up. Yeah. And yeah. honestly, Minnesota's looking like a fraud. That may They're be a fraud frauds. alert. They're always frauds. Let's take a quick break. We get back. We'll look at the Dallas Cowboys. This upcoming matchup. Let's do it. What comes to mind when you see the star logo? Well, I have this disdain for that whole star thing because in my era they had the stadium with the opening when they said that God left it open so that he could watch his favorite team. You can't help but the lovers. And just this whole talk of them being America's team and how is it that they become America's team? I've been going against that star for a long time. Even when you see somebody's wearing that thing, you know, somebody has a cowboy star on, it makes you just feel it. It's, it's sort of a learned behavior once you get drafted to the Eagles and you're here long enough, you quickly learn how important it is to beat this team. I think this game's a little chippy. This has been a tense physical struggle between these two rivals. My first Cowboys game as a rookie coming out of the tunnel. We all always came out in position groups and I'm looking up into the face of Harold Carmichael and all of these these big tears are welling up in his face and so I tightened up my chin strap a little bit tighter. Kids growing up in Philadelphia, it's something that you grow up with. If you're a Philadelphian, when I got to the Eagles, I just kind of fell in line. You watch people react the week of the games. You can tell when we're about to play the Cowboys because everybody's so fired up. You know, the things that they say about Dallas, you're seeing the little stickers on the back of cars. It's exciting for the city when we play in Dallas. That quote unquote term, America's team, that crawls on the, all of our skin, considering the birthplace of America. It's right here in the city of brotherly love, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. We are back. We are back. It's Dallas week. Like like the intro, Dallas, we hate you. We hate you, Dallas. Here's something else I hate. I, I got to do this real quick. I told you guys when this was happening, I'm going on a walk earlier this uh earlier this week and i thought you know i i get i get wip and wip is it's it's philly sports talk radio uh i get it on my phone through the odyssey app i don't know why i'm promoting it like telling people how to get it but so it's it's an hour on tuesday it's an hour before the trade deadline i go you know i'm going to let me let me put it on you know what they're talking about and I, it's it's ike it's ike reese it's spike and who is it fritz their yeah. show Guys, you're so lame. An hour before the deadline, you're talking about Christmas songs, Mariah Carey, and Taylor Swift for, I kid you not, 15 minutes an hour before the trade deadline. I don't know who needs to hear this, but take their show away. You guys suck. You're so beta. All right. All right. That's, I just had to get that off my, it's Dallas well, week, guys. How we feel? Oh, do you, you had something to say? About oh, well, I'm, if we're going to pile on WIP, let me just take a shot at Joe Giglio. Uh, 
<laughs> Micah oh, yeah, Parsons, yeah, yeah. you're willing to give up multiple first round picks for it? Shut the hell up, dude. Get out of here. The last thing we want to do is give Dallas multiple first round picks to go out and get a quality quarterback because that's where they're that's where <laughs> they're missing right there. They go out and get a real quarterback, that team may be something again. Like get the, yeah. what are you an idiot? And for Parsons, like come on, man. He's yeah. good, but I I don't know, man. I don't know if I want him to be an eagle. Their cap hit would be yeah. That's yeah. the that's the main thing. They're stuck with Dak, yeah. even it's even great. with the uh, the injury here, which you know, uh, if you guys want to get it, he has a hammy injury, and uh, mm. they revealed today that he tore uh, meat off the bone, like he tore partial his ham partially ripped off the bone, which that's just like you're you're never the same after that. Do you ever see the video of him getting hit over the head with a bottle of liquor? What? <laughs> Yes, I have. Yes, I have. Yeah. Hey, let me that pull was, this. I got. Let me. Let me. That let me, was let me, insane. Let me. It was insane. Continue, continue but I'm going to pull this up. Yeah, it's good uh, stuff. He was getting Not jumped that... in some parking lot. Oh my <laughs> god! It was like spring break or something like that. Oh, you know what? I think I did see that. Yeah, you hate to see it, uh, <laughs> man. So yeah, we're facing the Cowboys. Dak is out. Dak's out. He's not playing. He's tearing uh tearing meat off of his hand uh, bone uh so we're facing uh cooper rush which i'd rather face Dak, if i'm being Same. honest um you know cooper when he was a starter when he went four and one he can sling the ball around yeah you know who that one was that was the yeah, eagles was oh yeah but uh yeah so it's it's gonna be well like we were saying kind of before we hopped back in here um Man, this this game you're going down. You're going to Dallas. It's a divisional matchup. These are going to be tough, and uh, we don't want to say must win, but this is a game. This is a game you need, Clayton, right? Yeah, I mean, this is absolutely a game you need. I mean, I'm with you. You don't want to say must win, but it is almost a must win. This is an inferior team. Uh, I know it's a divisional rival. I know it's a tough spot for us to play in. But this is a game that this team should win and needs to win to keep pace with uh, with Washington here. Because uh, there's a good chance. I mean, I told, I've, and I've been saying it, and, and until they prove it to me, I'm not sold on Washington. I don't believe right. in them. And they, they got a tough matchup this week. They have Pittsburgh, which is their defense is legit, and Russell's playing pretty good right now. As much as, as, much as that shocks me to say. He actually yeah. is. Um, so, I mean, they have a tough matchup. It's That's not a give me. This is as close to a give me as you're ever probably going to get against the Cowboys. In so Dallas. you need to go in there and, and take care of business. Like, you can't be overlooked. This can't be a trap game. Whatever whatever bulletin material that you got to manufacture and make up to get yourself in the right headspace to go down there to want to rip their throats out, you need to get into that headspace. Because this game is important. We have to have this one. Yep. It's BG's last, could be, could be last game in Dallas. He hasn't won there in six years. So, I mean, that's that's on the bulletin for me. If I'm a coach, I'm saying, hey, BG, let's get everyone fired up. Uh, you got to lead. The, you want this. You got you to lead the, the squad here. That's right. You know what I mean? But, yeah, I agree. I mean, you, you got you to gotta come away with this. You got to come away with it. Man, how we looking injury wise? I know we we're banged up. It seems like everyone should be. We got Goddard back. Yep. AJ Brown back. Smitty is still questionable. He's got the hamstring. Everybody how was. We looking? Everybody was participating in practice as of today. Uh, just the only limited guys were Fred Johnson with his knee, Devontae Smith with the hammy, Nolan Smith with the groin, and Ben uh, Van Sumeren with the concussion. But every, yeah. other than that, everybody else was a uh, full participant. But there was a there was a hefty list. It was uh, yeah, Aya Smith, freaking uh, I don't know. Earth I had was it was on there. Yeah, so it, it got crazy. A yeah, lot of guys were getting rest too. Back yeah, the again. Wednesday one. Yeah, no, I was gonna say that Wednesday report was insane. Yeah, that that's the one. And like I had it all written down, and then I saw a different one came out today, so I hurried up and erased it. Um, it's pretty impressive that Van Sumeren was out there dressed participating so he's actually progressing through uh concussion yeah. protocol fast he they're saying that there's a legit 
uh, chance he could play Sunday. But I mean, again, he's just a fullback, so it's not a huge deal. But that's that'll be like one of the first guys this year if he does that made it through in a week. Do you think he'll play that concussion? I don't. I don't think he will. But uh, I would like to see him play. But uh, like, why risk it? Yeah. 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 I'm glad they're getting their rest. I I gotta tell you, I worry. I worry about Saquon. I worry about uh, the load. I mean, he's out there. He's jumping around. It's all great. But man, I wish we would have got. I mean, I don't uh, even know what's out there. But speaking of Saquon, uh, offensive player of the week uh, for the Eagles. Uh, for the Eagles, he's had three offensive player of the week of the week in eight games played with the Giants. He had three in seventy four games played, and, and then uh, <laughs> now has the most ever offensive player of the week awards for a Penn State player passing Terry Collins, who had five. Carrie wow. Collins, there's a flash yeah, from the past. Yeah. I knew you guys would like that. <laughs> oh man, good stuff, <laughs> man. <laughs> man, good I'm stuff. So, I, yeah. Good for Saquon, man. I love that guy. Yeah, he's he's a great dude. He he got he got he got tested. The, like he said, he got called like right after the game. You knew that was gonna happen. Yeah, random, right? That's random. <laughs> random random you know drug what? tests. He's I only mean, like I must agree. Like you gotta test this guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's only like a hundred and like twenty some yards or something off Derrick Henry. Just think if he would and like I think Derrick Henry has the bye this week. No, fourteen, right. week fourteen. Okay, okay oh, so 14. I'm wrong on that. But anyways, but think about like if he'd have played the quarter where he had the hundred and what I forget how many yards he had, like 160, 170 yards. Yeah, when he sat um, out against the Giants. Yeah, and so he sat out to eat. He sat out an entire quarter where he could have made up that ground. You know, and be a game our... behind still. Yeah, exactly. Uh. Yeah. Well, so it'll be interesting to see. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see how that race. You don't want to care about that stuff, but yeah. I, I also I want him to. Yeah, exactly. I want him to. I want him to win that. <laughs> I want him to win the rushing title or whatever. Exactly. Me too. As a leader, you're like, oh, that's nice of him, but I also as a selfish. Yes. Asshole, I yes. Want all of it. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So. I'm with you on that. Yeah. What you, like this far in? We're we're about. Yeah, we're about halfway. We're approaching halfway. Like, what do you think? What's 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 the ceiling on this team? Like, what are some real expectations that you guys have? Just seeing what we've seen and how things are coming together. I mean, what uh, what do you think? What do you think the ceiling is? I think the ceiling can be very high for this team. The way they're playing now. I mean, obviously they're the third ranked defense. They're sixth in offense. You know, overall, it's like huh, I honestly don't know last time they were this high in both uh attributes you know what i mean both both yeah. uh offense and defense so it's like the ceiling can be super high and i think that's again i hate to say it again and talk about the same thing but you can attest that to the the uh the coordinators being able to mm-hmm. uh change and stuff so i think the ceiling is as high as they want to make it yeah i'm right there with you i honestly i think super bowl um well okay you know i didn't want didn't want to put that on you to have well, to say it but you no know. i i think that this this team i mean if we take a look at the nfc right now where it's at at the state it is today i have the lions as the number one and i have you know the eagles at number two and i'll tell you what the gap everybody thinks the gap between those two teams is like huge i don't have it that big man i think it's the lions a little bit then the eagles and then there's a big gap for number three I think yeah. the Lions and the Eagles are the class of the NFC right now. And honestly, I'll be disappointed uh, if we, mind you, the caveat, we have to stay healthy. If we stay right. healthy at the end of the year, if we don't end up at least in the NFC championship game, like that's where I think this team yeah. is capable of getting to. Now, can they, you know, win that? That's a different story. We'll see what it looks like when we get there. But I honestly believe that's where this team should end up. Just where I'm, we're at today. I'm not quite Super Bowl yet. I want to see us play a little bit better teams. Mm-hmm. Like I, I'm sort of on board, but uh, at the same rate that we're coming off of four games where Cincinnati was our best game, and they, they haven't won a game at home either. So it's like you're, you're kind of getting maybe the shit luck of teams there. Now, if we if we just came out 4-0 against some quality teams, then I'm definitely there. But you know, I want to see us smack Washington. Not saying that they're a Super Bowl team. They're a better team and then smack the Ravens or something like that. Just see how we match up against a, a more quality football team. No, that's yeah, fair. I agree. That's fair. Uh, but I'm just saying that's where I see the ceiling at NFC championship game. Yeah, I'm uh, with you there. But I mean, there's a lot of football to be played to get there. And I'm with you. 
these last four weeks have been nice. Joe Burrow is the only elite quarterback that we've seen, and he doesn't have a real good team around him. Um, I mean, Trevor Lawrence is all right. Daniel Jones and and Watson yeah. are just oh my god, they shouldn't even be in the NFL. We're going into a putrid <laughs> Dallas team right now, you know. So yeah, with a backup quarterback, which again, like you guys were saying, maybe you know, addition nice. by subtraction because this is how bad Dak has been playing, you know, in the last I few think- games here. Didn't Cooper beat us once before, or am I? No, he was he was riding a undefeated streak rolling in. Uh, he hadn't turned the ball over either, and then he rolled in in twenty two, uh, to the link, and we smacked yeah. the shit out of him. I, yeah, I remember <laughs> him. I remember him <laughs> being somewhat decent for a second. So. Yeah, yeah, there was talks, and that was like because Dak wasn't playing that one. They're like, "Well, should Dak come back? Should should they just let Dak sit out a little bit longer?" And then after we smacked him, they were like, "All right, all right, Dak, you're back in. You're back in. Yeah. Let's go the next week. You're back." Yep. Kel- Kellen Moore should be able to offer a little bit of the drop on Cooper. No, you would think. Yeah, yeah. he worked with him. Well, not only that, he was his teammate, and then he was his quarterback yeah. coach, and then he was his offense coordinator. So I mean, he, he has a lot guy. of. He, I mean, yeah, he, he has a lot of association with him. You're getting a pocket passer. He's not getting outside of the box. Yeah, which, I mean, they're going to have to be one-dimensional because they have no run game. Doddle or whatever his name is, he ain't it. Um, who's the old head they just traded for? Not Oh, Mingo? No, no. Uh, the running back. Who is their other running? Not Ezekiel. Like, Ezekiel oh, tried to be there. Um, Let's see. Dalvin Cook, is that it? Yeah, yeah, they have cooked so. there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So Dalvin Cook, and he's cooked. So I mean, they they don't have a running game. Their their offensive line isn't what it was. I mean, the center's still good, but it's not what it was. Uh, they they said Brandon Cooks is probably coming off IR, so this will be his first week back. But I mean, it's his first week back off of IR, right. and it's looking like Lamb will go. Lamb's the only thing they have. Oh yeah, Lamb's, Lamb's gonna, gonna be hurt. hurt. Lamb's gonna get Lamb his. is hurt. I was gonna say, and it looks like he's dealing with something. So, oh man, that was bad Pick for him. You know what I was watching in the last game? Like I'm telling you, he scored a touch. He went out there after he was hurt, and they were giving him a little bit of treatment and stuff, and he could barely hold his shoulder up, and then scored a touchdown. And the guy just kind of like gave him a little elbow to the shoulder, and you could see like the man was hurt. He was oh, grasping really? at it. And, oh, he, I mean, if you just even look at the like the highlights, I'm sure you'll see that play because of the touchdown. Wow. Yeah, I'll have to go he check was, that out. I had no he, idea. I'm telling you, he was hurt, and I said it in the last pod. All right, well. I mentioned Mingo. That's hilarious. They uh they gave up more for Mingo than they got back for Amari Cooper. Mingo's and Mingo's terrible. Yeah, he's absolutely garbage. Second round pick, uh, I think he has one reception this year. Yeah. You see the, the one, one where yeah, oh, man, yeah. I saw it. <laughs> <laughs> He goes to catch the ball and he's like in the air. And then he does some vertical move and goes out of bounds, like in the air. <laughs> he could have easily just walked in bounds and he like jumps out and nobody around him. Oh, the heat fits right in down there. Oh, that's a that's a yeah. type of player Jarl wants. Just get this guy a gun and some <laughs> <laughs> some, some drug. Here that kind of leads me to my next point. Uh, so so we got we got Mingo. If you they got Mingo, but if you look at kind of like we are we are two teams two franchises just we couldn't be more polar opposites going into this game if you look at their fan base they're they're tired of the coach they're tired of their owner they're tired of this trade they're tired of the roster i mean like the vibes are so down on that whole franchise they're they're miserable they're they're frustrated and then on the flip side you look at us like you know we're on the come up we're loving everything we're loving our roster the vibes are great i mean like there's there's no reason on vibes alone and personnel, obviously, that we can't go in there and just completely put the nail in the coffin on this team, on this franchise, on this season. This is one we should win by a lot. And I hate to say that. I've been quiet about stuff like this the past couple of weeks. This is one we should pretty, pretty much handle. Yeah. yeah. This is a bad football team that we're going down there to face. And I keep saying it, you know, Division rival. I haven't played good in that uh, building, but you're right. This is the game we should go down there, handle business. We should win big. We should win by double digits. Will we? I don't know. I'm, I don't I'm know. feeling it. I'm kind of feeling it. 
I tell you what, we go down there and we stomp a mud hole in them. That 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 really, we might as well have just thrown dirt on them because that that's their season. There's no <laughs> coming bad, back. Yeah. I'm telling you, I might have to, I might have to name this team the the Grim Reapers because I I I gotta say, I think we think about it. We end. I I, I will say we ended uh, Cleveland. I'd say we ended the Giants. Mm-hmm. I'd say we ended the Bengals. If I'm being honest, even on that mm-hmm. fourth down play, their season was gone. They knew it. Who else? Who else wants it? Who I was wants gonna, it? Who even wants though it? it was super early in the season, I'm gonna say this: we ended the Saints. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We ended the Saints. They, that was the, 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 the yeah. That was the first game of their like eight game losing streak they're on now, and they were yeah. on fire. And they oh, were man. just shredding the uh, the defenses in this league, just dropping forty plus a game, and then rolled into us, and they haven't been the same since. Yeah, Grim Reapers, I tell you. Did you see that uh, that reel I sent you guys? It was like worst or most losses as a starting QB. And it was like, Derek, yeah. De- oh, David yeah. Carr, David Carr, Derek Carr, Derek Carr, <laughs> Derek Carr. I was like, Jesus, man. I mean, David Carr, for his sake, he didn't have a chance oh, in hell because he had the worst offensive yeah, right. line to ever in be assembled in NFL. Yeah. That, yes, that, that, is, like... that is 100% correct. That was the worst offensive line unit. And it was not just one year. It was multiple years. They did nothing. Yeah, and when yeah. they did do stuff, it was like they got worse. It's like, how are you putting worse people on this freaking line, <laughs> man? How is it possible? Like but they did it. Sacks for 60 sacks for like three years straight. Like, that's insane. That's pathetic. Their, their, their family Thanksgiving backyard football games, just a oh, toilet bowl. <laughs> just the worst <laughs> thing ever. <laughs> just a straight, terrible game. Just getting treatment. Getting <laughs> <That's laughs> <exactly. laughs> the blue tents on the sideline. Everybody's in the blue tents. <laughs> <laughs> the dad's throwing interceptions left and right. It just runs in the family heavy. Oh man. Oh yeah. Guys, are we are we doing predictions? Anything else you, you guys wanna wanna throw out there? Uh I think that pretty much Oh, I did want to give a shout yeah. out to, to Quentin Mitchell. Quint Quintanamo Bay. Yeah. Yeah, Mitchell. Uh, I don't know. Alex, yeah, Alex, you sent this. Uh, covered snaps without allowing a TD. 283 right now my man's at. He's just been oh, yeah, yeah, su- yeah, silently yeah. locking down out there. I mean, I know he's probably not going to get, unless he just starts picking the ball, he's probably not going to get defensive rookie of the year. But, I, man, he should definitely be in the conversation. He has he, been he is. so solid, man. At least from what I'm seeing, yeah, he's been, at least from what I see, there was uh, there was like four other guys. I, I don't know their names, but Jared I didn't Verse know. I know is like the leading. Okay, and he's not even doing that well. I couldn't believe it when I went and looked. He's at, he's got three point five sacks, one forced fumble, and I think he has twenty total combined, like assisted and solo combined uh, okay. tackles. So I mean, it's not it's not like lighting the world on fire. I, honestly, I think it's more impressive that. Dude gave or has gone 283 snaps without giving up a touchdown. I got something cool for this now. This doesn't uh, relate to last week's game, but this is Quinion Mitchell versus top receivers. Uh, Christian Watson, one catch for six yards. Drake London, one catch for five yards. Rashid Shahid, zero catches for zero yards. Mm. Mike Evans, two catches for 19. Mari Cooper, one catch for 10. Malik Neighbors, one catch for nine. And then Jamar Chase, two catches for 16 yards. So That's he hasn't insane. given up a touchdown all year. Yeah. Let, let me ask, well, let me ask you this on that. I mean, th- those are, that's, that's super impressive. Like, so what is it is because you got a new cornerback, a rookie cornerback. You got to think people are targeting him, especially against some of these, you know, great receivers. I mean, is it just known around the league that this guy's an absolute stud? I mean, I knew he was good, but like, are people yeah. just scared of him? Honestly, it shows up on tape. It, he shows up on tape 100%. So, it, and I'm not even, you know, a pro at watching tape, but I can see it. So I, these guys have to see it. And I think mm. that's why they're like, man, we're not really going <laughs> to uh, really we'll challenge him. We're not going to yeah. go at him. Uh, he's in position all the time and he breaks on the ball like a motherfucker, man. So mm-hmm. it's, <laughs> it's rough yeah. sledding if you're going to be targeting that side of the field. And then it's like, well, then what do you do? You want to go over to Slay? Who's, who's given up 200 percent of the catches? <laughs> so, well, and they're also I see they're uh, trying to target the linebackers more. So at least in the last game, they were. That's exactly what they wanted. That matchup uh, that Dean got, 
like the Jaguars were looking for that specific. They wanted that specific player on that specific, you know, route because they thought that they were going to be able to beat Dean. And Dean even said in his uh, presser that he got he beat on that at the – yeah, he knew it was coming because he got beat on it at the uh, open practice at the link, mm. which was his worst practice. Like, uh, that was like his rock bottom, and then he came up after that. But uh, he got beat on that, and he said it was in the back of his mind. He knew it was coming. And yeah. Eagles. And he uh, made the play. I looked at the Eagles Instagram before we hopped on. Uh, before we hopped on, Mike, and they they released a clip. I don't know if you guys saw it, but before that play, Dean talks about knowing it's coming, and then the coaches there like telling him, "Hey, like, stay, like, you know, work on your feet, do all this, do that." So before that play, Dean knew that that was what they were going to call. And I don't hmm. know, maybe they chopped it up, and I don't know if maybe it was earlier in the game, but it sure seems like it was before that play. Where he's like, "Hey, I'm gonna get it." They're like, "You're gonna get it," and they they knew, which is insane. I mean, that's some high yeah. IQ. Yeah, 100. percent And and Trevor telegraphed it. Uh, he never. As soon as he seen the running back clear the line and Dean go with him, he never came off it. He knew, like he. As soon as he seen it, he he drew back and and threw it, and it was like, dude, motherfucker, you guys are gonna learn all game long. Dean was coming up big in pass coverage, like. I, I think people are going to start real. I think the tape's going to start, you know, showing that he's not a liability like some people are thinking in the coverage game. Uh, not anymore. I, he's learning, which is that's his weakest. Uh, honestly, in his game, that's probably his weakest, you know, facet is coverage, and he's he's working and and getting better at it every single day. Yeah, John, you got some rankings for us. Yeah, I only think these rankings are important because they've drastically changed over the past couple of weeks, you know, and mm-hmm. I think that's kind of cool because they've, they've, they've gone up. So the offensive rankings here, we got the Eagles are ranked sixth overall uh, in offense with yards per game with 377.1, uh, 20th in passing yards per game with 202.4, second in rushing yards per game with 11th in points per game with 24.9. Now, the defense has drastically come up. Uh, They're ranked third overall um, in yards per game with 290.1. Seventh in passing yards per game with 189.0. Fifth in rushing yards per game with 101.1. And then ninth in points per game with 19.4. So they've drastically, you know, made a difference here. What did you say the offensive scoring rank was? And it was twenty four point something, but uh, what what does that rank in the league? Uh, let's see here, pull it back up. Offensive scoring, yeah, eleventh in points per game with twenty four point eleven. Yep. All right, we're climbing. We're that's climbing yeah. That, that's Hell why yeah. I keep doing it. You know what I mean? To see the difference, you know. Ten yeah. percent. Hey, man, this goes back in. Yeah, people people want to talk, you know, and and laugh at that but 10 percent better every week gentlemen no. hey 10 percent better, better every, every week. week only team in the nfl uh top six in both offense and defense so man the defense being ranked third who would have thought that coming into the season i, I definitely wouldn't have our dude our two our linebackers the best in the league two weeks running who would have thought that like I, that's, of us. that's I, insanity None I never would have thought. I thought for sure that it was going to be a liability. It was going to be one of the biggest holes on the team, the linebackers, and pass rush. That was like my worst fears. And pass rush has pleasantly surprised me. I mean, I don't think it's elite. I think it's just, you know, it's fine. And the linebacking has been lights out. Yeah, oh, yeah. They're going to start unleashing uh, Jalex. Jalex uh, Hunt on the edge. So. Yeah, they, yeah. Good they call They just out. signed uh, Ron Jackson as well up. I think it's because of maybe yeah. the health injury or you know I don't... yeah i seen that i was wondering about that if we're gonna what what the deal was with that if we're dropping a guy down or putting a guy on ir i don't know that was weird yeah no, i'm, I'm curious know. to see what uh Felix hunt gets uh here with uh you know being more involved what he's gonna look like that's something i'm excited for yeah, are we are we just are like what's so what's the deal with Huff? Are are we just kind of like phasing him out a little bit? Kind of wrist injury here, less snaps there. 
uh, fade away here. Right before this, I lied. They only brought Ron Jackson to the practice squad, so I lied on that. But uh, as far as Huff, um, I don't know what the, I don't know what the hell this guy. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, it's Ben Simmons. Huff is Ben Simmons. <laughs> it's, yes. Oh, oh, oh no. Well, yeah. Uh, uh, Off-season uh, training videos. Dude, he's, <laughs> he had them, dude. He had off-season uh, training oh, videos. Oh no. Huff is fucking Ben Simmons, dude. I'm sorry to say it. I uh I I don't know what to do with this guy. Uh, it's obvious Vic doesn't like him. Um, it's obvious he can't play the position that they wanted him. They brought him in to play. Uh, it's, you know they gambled and they lost on that one. But I also the worst part is, and I kind of feel bad for him. Like I don't feel like he wants to be here, and I feel like he doesn't feel like we want him here, which is pretty much correct. I mean, if you took the uh, pulse of the fan base here, I think the majority would say. He's been a huge disappointment. Get him out. He's overpaid. But um, I, I don't know. I don't know what 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 do you do with him? Like, do you and at this point maybe you screwed his head up so bad that you can't even just put him back to the what he was doing with the Jets that he was successful at? Because that's the he's yes, yeah, his mind's fucked. So that's, I mean, what do you do with him? That's the only thing you can do with him. So like, you have to put him out there on obvious passing downs and let him rush from the four and get his yeah. mojo back. But it's I, question is, can he get it back? That, other than that, I don't know what else you do with the damn guy. Because <laughs> uh, you can't cut him. And uh, wow. how I honestly, it's not a move that I was expecting. But when uh, that phantom hand injury came up last game, I was like, man, maybe Howie is going to move this motherfucker in a trade. Maybe Howie is uh, willing to yeah, be, but, you know, the I, bigger man and say, hey, I put, put my hand up. I screwed up here. Uh, you know, we took a gamble on this guy and it didn't work out. He's not working here. Get him out. When I saw that twelve million dollar cap hit the next year, I knew they weren't great. That's yeah, that's, that's the point that I knew because they're not going to pay that for a guy that they're going to trade away. Yeah, especially bringing like let's say they trade for a, a massive DN Crosby Garrett something like that. No way that they can afford to pay the twelve million and bring on a big contract. Hmm. Maybe they can, but I'm just saying, like, it makes it harder than to yeah, do anything. Yeah, I was going to say, it definitely makes it a lot more difficult. Well, millions a lot of money. Yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, that's, you could go out and get a couple players for that, you know? That's Zach Bond's extension right there. Exactly, you know? which we need to lace which, up. Yeah, we need to get that Quick. soon. The sooner, the better. I wonder if his uh, his agent's like, well, let's hold off a little bit. Oh, for sure. They're going to try to yeah. rack it up. So he gets injured. On the flip side, it, it's not guaranteed if he goes somewhere else that he's going to play better. And I, I would be almost, valued as high. Like he's in our system. I, I don't know. Yeah, if, you know. and and I, he he talks speaks very highly of Vic and is very thankful that Vic was willing to give him the opportunity that he has here. And I think that that may make a difference when it comes to contract. Maybe he'll give us a little bit of a hometown deal. Hopefully, or at least just, you know, give us a chance to sign him and not just dip out the door. Like, right, right. I, I, like, I don't, I feel doesn't... like TJ Edwards was like done with us. Like, oh, he was signed five minutes into the, into free agency. It was like, wow, man, this guy wanted no parts of us, you know, undrafted free agent. We gave you your shot. We made you what you are and you, you couldn't wait to get out of this place. Like hey, but... that shocked me. Wasn't he like yeah. a lifelong Bears fan? So he just hurried yeah, up. Yeah, and I he, get and it. If, you don't, if, you're not, if you're not going to get a shot, you know, to, or like you didn't get a shot and somebody gave you a shot and now you made your career, like, first thing I'm doing is going right back to Philly. <laughs> I respect that. Yeah. You're right. I, I don't know. Yeah. I'm just, you know, like a jealous bitch here. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I think Bond is not the type of guy that would do that. I mean, I think Bond? Yeah, I, think, <laughs> I, I know watching, the guy, right? I was watching Moneyball earlier. Okay, Bond is that one pitcher that comes in. He's like talking to Billy Bean. He's like, "Thank you so much." For this opportunity. <laughs> God bless Nobody, you and your family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna pray for you. Nobody has given me this opportunity. He's like, nobody. <laughs> He's like, okay. Oh, that's hilarious. That's the guy that had the, like the submarine style. Uh... Yeah, 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 yeah. Nobody liked him because he pitched weird. Yep. That's funny. Great movie. Moneyball is a great movie. Laura was furious. I was watching it. <laughs> did Did you have a question, John? You said you had a question. I got a fun question. If we're oh, let's do it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So 
And I'm going to go on a little bit of a tangent here, I think, too. Uh, yeah, do, it, do, do it. it. I was watching part of my take earlier this week because they had John Gruden on. It was actually mm. uh, it was not a good week. episode. Yeah, they're a great podcast, too. But uh, it was the week of the Cincinnati Bengals game. But um, anyways, I don't know if you guys know what John Gruden does now. He has this thing called the uh, Fired Football Coaches Association. He, so he has this building that he rents. And um, he has, like, separate rooms. He has, like, an Eagles room, a Green Bay Packers room, a uh, Tampa Bay, and a Raiders room. He has all the playbooks of every game ever, you know, for all that stuff, preseason and everything. And then he has, like, he said he, he thinks he's the only person that has, like, two servers where he can go in and, like, watch tape and, and make adjustments to tape. He had, like, all these, like, hundreds of VHS tapes. It was insane. Tape. But, um. Uh, my brother was showing me that. But anyways, so they're they're on this podcast. They're talking. One of the PMT uh, co-hosts, this dude's Max. He's like a fatter guy with long hair. He's a Philly fan or whatever. They ask him, who's on his Mount Rushmore of Eagles? And that's a great question. So I wanted to ask you guys, what is your Mount Rushmore of Eagles? And then I got a follow-up. Your Mount Rushmore of Eagles player. Man, all that's time? Tough. All time. Can I can I go on a little bit of a rant about Mount Rushmore's quick? Yes. So, and and I get into it with people on social media about this a lot. Like the the Mount Rushmore, and I'm going to say all this and then do it the opposite way. The Mount Rushmore isn't necessarily like the four best presidents or what have right. you. Right. They all they all signify different eras of uh like you know what I mean? A lot of people go mm-hmm. Mount Rushmore and they do. It can be whatever you want. It's opinion. I know. I know. I'm gonna. I'm gonna do. Yeah. yeah. Okay. All right. All right. All right. So I understand what you're saying, but even Mount Rushmore is basically what you're saying is an opinion. Okay. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, no. yeah. No, I was just saying. Like a lot of people go. Like, well, here's here's my four favorite or best Eagles. Like it's not the best Eagles of all time. Like you could say like Van Buren. Yes. Or, or like, you know what I mean? Like, or like who ushered in a new era? Like you would almost say like, even if, you know, Andy Reid was like really changed the culture. So like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm, I'm getting way too into my head about this. All right. I'm going to do my four favorite. <laughs> I can tell you who the, he picked too, if you want to. And uh, then I also have, I also have some like nominees that may make you think a little bit too. All right. Well, uh, here I'll, I'll I'll go. Being on the spot, okay. Let's. Uh, I am going to limit this to players that I was yep. alive for. Okay, yeah, I agree with that. Uh, and that maybe not even alive for, but that I remember watching. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead. I'm going to go ahead and say Donovan McNabb definitely deserves a place on that Mount Rushmore. Uh, Just simply for the fact that, I mean, before D-Nab came in in the 90s, it was pretty bleak. And he really, you know, with Andy Reid, turned us into a a perennial contender, a winner. Yeah, it turned us into what we are right now. I'm going to go ahead, and I'm kind of, I guess I'm going to be working all around here. I'm going to go ahead and say... Nick Foles has to be on that. Has to be. Has to be on that. He he brought the first uh, Super Bowl to the city. And are we doing players? Yeah, I'll do players, not coaches. And uh okay, man, let's see. Oh man. Uh let's see. I don't know, Clayton. I don't know if you want to start yours while while I'm ra- I'm racking. I want to make sure I'm not. Mine are all old heads. Yeah, go go. Yeah, go go with those. All right. Norm Van Brocklin. Uh, hate that. Steve Van Buren, Reggie hate White, yeah. and yeah. Chuck Benaric. Hate all that. No Brian Dawkins. Uh, nope. I mean, yeah, yeah, you could. Damn, dude! I think I'm like I think I'm stumped here. I mean, Re- Reggie White. I thought I was. I mean, that was I wasn't. I don't think Minister of Defense. I remember him, but like I don't. Okay, I, I limited myself here by doing this the way I'm doing it. I think Todd Pinkston. <laughs> no, yes, uh, yes. 
I co-signed that. James uh, Brash. <laughs> yes. I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna put I'm gonna put Fletcher Cox on there. There you go. That's one I was looking for. I'm gonna put Fletcher Cox on there. I just heck of a player and he he I'm not putting any of the other like four long tenure dudes. So I think he's like representing that pack of just like the draft picks that we drafted hometown and kind of ushered in that era. And then I guess It's too, oh man, I don't think anyone from this team, I, I want to say, man, I don't know. I, I like a, like a, like a Selick. I don't know. Like a guy like that. Maybe not Ooh, even like that. No. Nah, what about uh Chad? Uh... Lewis. Chad Lewis. Lewis was, yeah. Chad Lewis was, I'm going to go Dawkins. I'm going to go, I'm going to go Dawkins. I'm going to put him on go there. Dawkins. I'm going to go Dawkins. Yeah. I'm going to go Dawkins Cox. Uh, Dawkins, Cox, Foles, Nab. I'm going to go Dawk. I'm going to go Lane Johnson because he's probably the best right tackle of all time. Yeah. As far mm-hmm. as Eagles. I'm going to go LaShawn McCoy. I was, thinking, I was thinking about that. And then my fourth, like, I hate to say it. Because I got, I got some, let me, let me do the honorees first, though. Oh, one you got my honorees. honorees. Okay. Yeah. Jason Peters, I think, is a good one in there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Jeez. Maybe even Trent Cole. Oh, only because like he's the second leader in sacks behind Reggie oh. White. Yeah, uh, you know, and I like Reggie White too, but I don't want to pick what everybody else is. Trent Cole uh, was a monster, man, and I don't mean yeah. many people remember that. Like he, yeah. he, he was like dominant as hell. Like before edge rushers were freaks, like they are nowadays. Like he was like he started that. I was a huge Javon Curse fan, although he didn't play most of his years here. Uh. He was really good. My last one's probably going to be Jason Kelsey, which I hate to admit. But... Oh man, I didn't think he'd do it. Yeah, I didn't think. I think I can't stand the guy because he's in the media. But I mean, look, if you're talking just football, if you're talking to Mount Rushmore, I mean, yeah, it's a no-brainer. Put a now, little cell phone, little cell phone chiseled out in the rock. I have. I feel like I have an even better uh, follow-up here. This is a Philly sports Mount Rushmore. Oh shit! Yeah. Let's see what you guys got. Cause I got, I got a. You want me to go first? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna. I'm gonna I got B Doc. I got Mike Schmidt. Mm. And this is where it kind of gets a little hazy for me. I got like a couple different other ones. Uh, possibly Pete Rose. Possibly Allen Iverson for me. Uh, I think this guy's probably gonna be on there for me, but um, he was a little bit. Before my time, um, Dr. J. Julius Irving. Oh, yeah. God damn it. I was hoping you wouldn't say that. And then Bryce Harper still playing. And uh, he might be one of the best uh, Philly athletes of all time. I don't know. So I got three big ones and Pete Rose probably. I, okay. Uh, uh, man. Okay. All right. All right. Uh, Eric Snow. Joe what? Frazier. <laughs> Is that your first one? <laughs> <laughs> no, I, oh man, uh, I'll I'll, uh, I'll piece mine. I, I think, I think I definitely have AI. Just I mean, nice. it, it was a staple. The, the what he did for like just I don't know. He he was just uh, like culturally, yeah. Back in the two thousands, uh, you know, I this guy's kind of come on like Chase Utley. Okay, nice. I like that. Yeah. I like a Chase Utley. Uh, just, um, Kembe Mutombo. No, I don't, man, I, I can't put me, I feel bad about putting McNabb on the, on the Eagles Mount Rushmore. So that should tell you that. Yeah. I made a mistake there. I made a big mistake. I, 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 yeah, I'd have to agree. I mean, as much as I don't want to anoint it too early, I would have to put Harper on there. Nice. I was hoping you'd I, do that. I just I I don't think he's earned absolute Rushmore status yet. But but neither did Allen Iverson. You know, you talk about you know, he 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 never brought a championship. I just I feel like Harper needs to. I don't know. There's something about it. But the moments that he's brought have been amazing. He's a beast. 
and I guess, and I guess I'll go. I'll I'll, I'll go. I'll I'll do Dawkins again. Yeah, I'll do Dawkins again. Like that. All right. All right. Uh, just because you both put Harper on, I'll leave him off on mine. I didn't put uh, Harper on mine. Harper was a nominee. You didn't. Oh man, yeah. I, I love Harper on there. Uh, man, I want to put him on there, but I'm going to put Pete Rose on there instead. Yep. Yeah. Um, Nick Foles. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Eric Lindros. <laughs> oh no <Yeah>. way! <laughs> All right, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> no way. Uh, no, I, want, that. I want to put Cruck on mine. Ooh, I like Cruck. On my on my overall, so I'm gonna, take, I, I'm gonna take off. I'm gonna take off. Uh, Utley. Hmm. Yeah, I think I think I gotta take off Utley. Cruck. No, I'm gonna take off Harper, and put Cruck, yeah. Utley, AI, Doc. All right. Clayton exactly. has Pete Rose and Nick Bowles. Julius Irving. Yep. Mm. Dr. J. Dr. J. Can't that guy that guy was just a freak. Will Chamberlain was good too, but I mean yeah. Um Man, that last one, that's tough for me. I mean, do I Jane Victorino. If I go with, you know, the person my favorite eagle of all time. He's already on there though, Doc. Yeah. Um. Yeah, man, that's. Tough. I yeah. mean, it, realistically, you're doing the best players of all time. Like, I know you're trying to pick something different, but Dawkins is there. You know? Yeah, Dawkins His is face on is there. Chiseled out and. Yeah. Yeah, Doc. I love Doc, dude. Uh, Kelsey is another one I loved, and Johnson is another one I love. And these are all audible mentions that are even said. Um, cool. Trey Thomas was another audible mention. Oh yeah. A lot here. Trey Thomas. Uh, had a whole. I, f- I figured Chad Lewis would be on a well. Chad Lewis was good, but I always Nate Allen one of your favorites. <laughs> oh, Michael Lewis, Takeo Spikes, Takeo Spikes, yes. <laughs> Just naming random players now. What is it? What's the fourth? I'm just gonna go Dawkins, man. I can't, I can't not have one without Dawkins on it. Like he's my favorite player. I don't care. I'm going with him. All right, just I already on. Something I like on. I was trying I like to do. It. Yeah, I liked it. I already messed up. It, BG's got to be on one of mine. I, I thought, up. I thought BG yeah. would be your all Eagles. I thought that would be the first person you pick. He's on my right, Philly. Honestly. He's on both of them. Yeah, yeah. I messed I up. I, yeah, I, I overthought. I overthought, and I thought I went too far and thought, you know. I thought uh, for sure you were picking BG. Yeah, BG's on there. Yeah, it's like, yeah, he's on there. So I gotta, yeah. I gotta, I, I'm taking D-Nab off. Na- I'm taking say, D-Nab drop McNabb and put BG on there. That was the most embarrassing thing I've ever said on, on Mike. <laughs> <laughs> you go D-Nab, which I, I kind of agree, but then you realize, you know, you hear all the stories about him as a person. He's just like a piece of shit. Yeah. I was trying to look at it like different eras and what they meant, and it's just, that was dumb. No, I mean, you're correct. I mean, that, him and Andy completely reset what the Eagles franchise was and put it on a trajectory of where we're at today. I mean, yeah. without that, well, and Lori, Jeff Lori coming in and buying it, what did he buy it in 97, 98, something like that. Something like that. Something in the Myself. mid to late nineties. He bought it. I think, something like that. Was it? Well, I knew it was something like that, but anyhow, I mean, he, him taking over and having a, you know, an owner that actually gave a shit about the team and then going out and finding a, a coach Especially a coach like Andrew, he was a quarterback coach. Like he had never right. done anything up to that yeah, point. That, that's like one of the best coaching trees of oh, all that time. Tree, yeah. Uh, oh my god, I just had his name. I can see his face. Like Holmgren. Uh, Holgren, that's it. Holgren tree. Mm. Yeah, that is ungodly. And then Andy's tree that came off of Holgram's tree is ungodly. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. McVeigh and all that. Mm-hmm. Came out of that yeah. tree. 1994. Was it 94? Damn, I thought it was yeah. later. I thought it was a little bit later. Either way, uh, that was probably the best thing to happen to the Eagles in the history of the franchise. And I was critical of Lori throughout the early 2000s, mid-2000s there, uh, especially when he kept Howie around when Howie was so – I know Howie is like legendary status now, but mm-hmm. I don't know if everybody remembers how bad Howie was before. Before he got put in that closet where Chip <laughs> Kelly usurped him, <laughs> yeah, he was bad. He was the original analytic. He was terrible. That guy couldn't draft. His moves were terrible. Like, but 
and I kept saying, like, we're never going to win a Super Bowl title with Howie and Lurie at the head of this team. And they made wow. me eat my words in 17. So good on it's good them. to be wrong. It's good to be yeah, wrong in that. I'm happy, that's one I'm happy to be wrong about. Yeah. yeah. Man, that was a good one. That was a little br- a, br- a brain refresher. Yeah, I like that. Now let's do your Mount Rushmore of sports cars. No. Oh, <laughs> shit. <got> <laughs> Rivian. <laughs> That's true. Well, guys, hurt. I don't know. I feel good about it. Do you want to do predictions? Anybody got uh, yeah. anything else? I I I think we're gonna do. I'm feel. I'm I'm. When you said double digits, I'm I'm all in on that. I think we win by double digits, and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go a hot. Uh, let's see. I'm gonna go a hot. Thirty-one to ten. Damn it! That's a. I was going to go 30-10, but uh, I'm going to switch now. I'm going to go 28-9, three field goals. Ooh, I like Ooh. those. I like that. I'm going to go 34-17, but that last touchdown is because we pulled all our starters. Who? So it's really 34-10, and they just get one in garbage time. I like that. I'm going to go some. Four sacks, too. Four Ooh, sacks, geez. yes. All right, all right. I know I said I was going to stop doing this, but Q gets his fucking first pick of the year. Oh, this no, game, no, off no, no, no. We're doing well, it. Spe- well, speaking of, like, the like defensive rookie, you know, all that, I think if Q gets, like, two picks, he's a front runner. The way I he's agree. playing, he just needs that. He needs that that highlight. He needs people mm-hmm. to see him, and, and that's how you get it. I think you also got Cooper to John in that running too. Oh, I'd love that. He keeps playing the way he's playing, dude. By the end of the, and he stays healthy by the end of the year. He he's gonna have like he'll be undeniable. You know, it, it, you can't not have his name in there. Like he'll make himself undeniable to everybody. But uh, I think if if Quinn or if Q gets a uh, a pick six, even just a pick six, just one interception, pick six, it might put it might elevate him to the top of the. Defensive rookie, for sure. and he just needs to set a big time play. Like that's just that's yeah. the only thing missing off the resume right now is a big time play. He's had a ton of clutch breakups. You know he's very sticky in coverage. Doesn't give up much. Just needs that takeaway and that or that one big play, that one big splash play, and people come around. And I'd even say like depending on what happens this year with uh, Jay Luxon, I mean we got to start looking at this draft as. You know, maybe maybe one of the best. Oh. Yeah. But I'm telling you right now, it's one of the best top two picks we ever had. I mean, how yeah. we nailed those two. These two are gonna be studs for us for years to come. Yeah. And it might be a little too early to tell, but uh I think Nolan Smith was the uh second rounder last year. Am mm. I right on that? Uh he was the fine we had two first, first round picks. He was right round. at the end. Yeah. Might as what well have been. Pete? It was at the very Pete? end. Dean was a second rounder, though, wasn't he? Or, he was no, that was third. Third, third yeah, yeah. Yeah, he dropped. People just kept. All right, never mind. Him. All right, let's get out of here, guys. Anything else? No, sir. Nope. No. Go, Go birds. Go birds. Go birds. Fuck Dallas.